So Matthew 10, 34 to 39 says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Hang on there. Wasn't Jesus meant to be this man of peace? This man who would unite and bring together everyone, would just calm things down. Well, I mean, that's the message, you know, I love. That's kind of what I've, what I've signed up to. I, and I'm quite a pacifist, really. So this passage is really challenging to me. Is Jesus really bringing the sword? <sighs> To make his point here, Jesus uses a passage from the Old Testament. It's from Micah 7. And what's fascinating about the Micah passage is that Micah is bringing a message to the Jewish people. This isn't a, a, a warning to the Romans, the Greeks, the Babylonians, the Canaanites, the Hittites, any previous uh, Gentile population. It's a warning to God's people, the Israelites. And Jesus really cleverly uses Micah's words here to challenge the Jewish people again. His people, of course. The warning is, is one that Jesus knows will split opinions. Brothers will disagree, parents will split on this, uh, even in-laws, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. They might not agree on this. Not everyone will be of one voice or of one accord here. Families may split, they may disagree. That sort of peace is not something we are to expect. Now I've come to my cricket ground. My cricket ground. Is this a place of peace for me? Sometimes. Other times it's not. I mean, if I have a bad day's worth of cricket, it can spoil a weekend for me. Well, hopefully Sunday I've got a chance to recover. It's sometimes a place of peace, but it's a place of tension. If I have a great game, I can feel great. If I have an awful game, I always feel like I should retire. Sell my cricket stuff. And then there's the talk of the sword, of course. And the sword, this metaphor of the sword, well, the sword brings up a couple of different images in my mind, at least. It, it cuts, often flesh. It divides, it separates what was once together. And yes, uh, it's used in a military sense. It's used in a battle as well. So you've got that metaphor in there as well. But that dividing nature of a sword, I think is important. But Jesus is using the sword like a metaphor. He doesn't want to cause division. He doesn't want to cause upset and battles within families, you know, biological or wider. But he knows that his message is so different that it will do exactly that. This sword that uh, Jesus is using, it will not unite everyone's opinions. And that is his warning here. His battles are not earthly. He's talking about different battles. His message will not be accepted by everyone. In fact, Jesus here showed us that his message will not bring peace but division like a sword it will cut and separate but we tend to focus in on this this metaphor this strange moment when we sit there and go what's Jesus talking about we're in danger of missing the point Jesus's question to us all is this who are we following 
and where are our loyalties? If those we are closest to, you know, are fighting against Jesus or disagreeing with Jesus or trying to pull us away from Jesus or his church, who are we siding with? What is the most important thing to us? That's the big question. Even our own families can distract us from God. And if and when they do, does God still reign supreme in our life?